We will solve some problems here on Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. We're going to combine that equation with proportions. So just to make sure we're in the same place, here is Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Universal because it says every two masses that you pick in the whole universe feel this force of gravity. Okay, if the distance between... So suppose two objects attract each other with a gravitational force of 16 units. So probably the unit is newtons, but maybe it's, you know, pounds or something else. If the distance between the objects is doubled and all other factors remain constant, okay, so mass 1 is staying constant, mass 2 is constant, g is always constant, uh, what would be the new force of attraction between the objects? Well... My first force is going to be big G times the first mass times the second mass over the distance between them squared. My second, and that first force, by the way, is 16. My second force, I have the same G. I plug in the same mass, that's not changed. I plug in the same M2, that's not changed. But in place of R... I have to double the original value. So it's not the same r as before. It's twice that distance. We have to distribute the squaring to both things on, in the parentheses. And when we do, we get g m1 m2 over 4 times r squared. But I could break the 4 out as its own fraction. I just have to keep it in the denominator g m1 m2 over r squared and look at this that's the original mass whoops that's the original mass here the original m2 and the original r times g but the original g times the original mass 1 times the original mass 2 over the original r squared is all equal to 16 so i am going to substitute in for this entire expression and say f2 is a quarter times 16, which gives me four units, whatever the units are. All right, part B. If the distance between the objects is reduced in half, okay, so I'm going from r, and the new value is going to be r over 2, then what's the new force of attraction? Okay. The second force, the new force, F2, all right, I do g, times the two masses over the distance squared. Well, m1 is staying the same, m2 is staying the same, and we have r over 2 now. Always we distribute the square to the factor and also to r. And I have g m1 m2 over r squared divided by 4 but instead of dividing, I mean, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking g, m1, m2, and I'm dividing by r squared over 4. Instead of dividing by r squared over 4, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by 4 over r squared. And we get 4 times g m1 m2 over r squared. But again, g times m1 times m2 over r squared, that is simply equal to 16. So I can substitute in and say 4 times 16 gives me a final answer of 64 units. On to number two. <clears throat> Suppose that two objects attract each other with a gravitational force of 60 newtons. If the mass of one is doubled and the distance is tripled, what would be the new force of attraction? So my first gravitational force is g times m1 times m2 over r squared. My new second force, let me just put parentheses, uh, 
Oh, and by the way, uh, this first force is 60. In the second case, one mass is doubled, so this goes to two of the original value. The other, they don't say anything, so it stays the same then. And the distance is tripled from r to 3r. Well, I have to, before I do anything else, I have to distribute the square operation. Now, I have g times 2 times m1 times m2 over 3 squared, that's 9, r squared. And I have here g times m1 times m2 over r squared, g, m1, m2 over r squared. Those three things go away, and in their place I substitute what they equal, 60 newtons. And so what I have now is F2 equals, those three things went away, I replace them with 60. I've got 2 still in the numerator and 9 in the denominator. So I calculate this out. Well, it's going to be 2 thirds, so 40 over uh, 3. Well, let's just do the math. 60 times 2 over 9, 13.3. Newtons. That is the answer.